but even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and mercy from God, our Creator, be with you all. Amen. This past week, I spent some time up at Luther Park Bible Camp up in Chatech. It's our partner in ministry where hundreds of youth go to camp each summer to be nurtured in faith. We had some campers up there, and I was able to spend some time with them and with the staff, take part in some holy play was able to bring out my guitar and get my fingers ready for VBS, and I get worship and swat mosquitoes at the same time, all to enjoy the presence of God in a very unique way that is camp. It was great. Camp is up, and on its western shore, its western boundary is the lake. And part of camp, and dealing with it, is dealing with the elements because of this, for the most part, when storms come up on camp, because usually they come from the west, you can see them coming. This was the case on Wednesday evening as I was walking to the dining hall, and I look over to the lake, and it looks like a fog is coming at me from the lake, except it wasn't a fog. It was rain, a bone-soaking wall of rain, and I started to walk a little faster. And then I started to run as the drops started hitting me in the head, running with hopes to make it inside the dining hall before it all came down. Sliding into the safety of the shelter with only a few drops on my shoulders, I felt pretty good, but then I also realized there were some unlucky cabins that were still not there, stuck in the rain, and they come in and giant puddles form underneath them on the dining floor. This fresh experience in my mind with these Bible scriptures about this week in hand, I started thinking about other storms in my life that I've experienced, ones that were ingrained in my mind that have been out of maybe the energy and the excitement and the fear that were part of these storms. I remember being on a boat like these disciples out on a big lake when a storm was coming in and getting caught off guard and that fear in my stomach as we raced to shore to get secure from the wind and the lightning that was coming. It still makes me extremely paranoid to this day that if I'm ever on a boat, I'm constantly looking at that horizon just to be sure. I remember my first tornado. I was maybe six, having a sleepover at my cousin's house in Iowa, and we're goofing around like six-year-olds would, 
and the storms came quickly, and the sirens howled loud and being ushered off into the basement and staying down there for what felt like hours. Even though I didn't know exactly what was going on, I could feel the electricity in the air, both from the storm and from my family. And I remember the praying, God, help us. Today is gospel lesson. The disciples experienced some very familiar and human reactions in the face of a storm. A storm that comes upon them in their little boat. They get in the boat to cross the lake to get away from the crowds that started to build. And Jesus, he takes his time to go rest, to go lay down. And here comes that storm. As the boat starts to turn and take on water, the disciples freak out and they wake Jesus up and they ask him, don't you care? We're perishing. Come on, Jesus. We're dying out here. Don't you care? And he wakes up and he turns to the storm and he says, peace, be still. And it stops. And he lays back down, at least in my mind, he lays back down and he looks at his disciples and is like, what's the big deal? Why are you so afraid? Where is your faith? Why are you afraid? Where is your faith? Where would your faith be if you were them? Many are drawn to the story when they experience difficult times, and for good reason. From this story, we're shown something about Jesus, a promise and a power that reassures us of the presence of God in our lives, and the ability of God through Christ to endure and to conquer the storms that crash all around us. The disciples' experience with the storm and witnessing Jesus stilling it turned the world upside down and gave them this mystery to ponder and ask and think about what is God up to? What is God doing with this guy? Jesus is not just a prophet. He's God, able to control the elements, control the storms, to bring calm into the midst of fear and chaos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another storm blew in while I was at camp last week. But this was a different kind of storm. The tragic, racially motivated shooting death of nine beautiful sisters and brothers in Christ in Charleston Church on Wednesday night brought with it a storm of pain and anger and grief. Again, the complex and ugly side of racism and its place in our national fabric blew into the forefront of our consciousness. We're horrified, but we're also easy to forget that attacks on black houses of worship are nothing new in our country. Well, these kinds of shootings always give me pause and ask me to pray for forgiveness for our collective failure. The fact that the shooter was a member of an ELCA Lutheran church and that two of the pastors killed went to a Lutheran seminary caused me to pause even more. I couldn't dismiss this as something far away and removed. Nine beloved children of God, nine beloved black children of God killed after welcoming this stranger into their midst. Teacher, don't you care? We are perishing. We yell out in fear. Help us. One of the surprises of our gospel story today, when you really think about it, is that the disciples did trust God. They trusted God so much that they ran to the front of the boat and shook him awake and said, Get up! You're here. Help us. Maybe they didn't know exactly about it at the time, but they couldn't and maybe they couldn't describe it perfectly, but they knew who to go to when they needed help. They knew who it was sleeping in the front of the boat. Their fear broke them open into something new, and something new began to grow out of them, something that reached up through the gloom of their experience and caused them to reach out to God, to the grace and mercy of God. Who is this that he can calm the wind and the seas, they ask? Jesus can. 
Jesus reminded them that they are beloved children of God and God will never abandon them to the storms. I think that's maybe the biggest thing we're called to do together as the church. We're called to remind each other that while God may be so much bigger than we can think, and that while the life of faith might be much more difficult at times than other times, God does not abandon us. As we grapple with tough questions of faith, as we grapple with things like racism and our place in it, God does not abandon us. God will not abandon us to the storms of our lives, even those gale-forced winds of our fears. Rather, God comes, stills the winds and the waves, and he calms us in our fears, telling us again that we are God's beloved children and calling us to greater faith. This week, I need to hear that promise. I need to be reminded by God of this fact. Because sometimes the storms are tough and they're rough and they call me to cry out. But then I see Jesus break through and he asks me, where is your faith? Like when I heard Jesus break through this week, when I heard these broken-hearted family members tell this young killer, we forgive you. May God have mercy on you. What an act of mercy of Jesus. Yes, God, we are perishing. Help us. Help us. Amen.